Wanted to give you a brief introduction to how we moved on as far as climate justice is concerned and how the judiciary has played a role, a very effective role in Pakistan in moving the agenda of climate change. So we started off in the early 90s and we were talking about environmental pollution, and environmental issues. And at that time, we were talking about environmental justice and the issue was revolving around a polluter that was within our jurisdiction and what kind of penalties we could impose and how could we stop that polluter from polluting the environment. But things went beyond that. And later on, we discovered that the polluter was somewhere else and wasn't in the country anymore while we were suffering from that pollution that was being created. So the effects of climate change reached Pakistan and we realized that while we're not contributing to climate change, we are suffering at the hands of it. And we had to come up with another strategy jurisprudentially. And we realized that the existing environmental law and the existing environmental principles were not enough. And we had to expand and come up with some innovative ideas to see how to deal with this. Because our problem was not mitigation, but was adaptation. We had to adapt to this new climate over which we had no control. So every sector had to adapt. And now if we had cases coming in from the industry or from the forest department or from the agriculture department, we had to see in every matter whether at all they have taken steps which would be adaptative, which would be climate resilient so that the country kind of is not further affected by the climate change. So the canvas kind of totally increased, it enlarged, you see, and we had to come up with the new toolkit and creative ideas to deal with climate change. So some of the ideas that we came up with was in the case that came forward and was perhaps the first climate change case, and I have the privilege of authoring the judgment, was the Lagari case, where a farmer had come to the court and said that climate change is uh, affecting the heat that's uh, around us now is going to lead to drought and I'll be totally out of my lands and I won't be able to till my lands and, 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 and do agriculture. So the government should come up with a policy and government has a policy which it uh, is not implementing. So the court interfered and we came up with a tool called development of commissions. You see, we thought that this is an inquis inquisitorial jurisdiction. We could not really direct the government to start and find an answer. We thought we'll help the government find answers. So we came up with the constitution of a commission and commission had the, all the stakeholders. It had the government, it had international NGOs, it had experts and it had the petitioner. And we said, why don't you all sit down and evolve a solution to this problem? Because we need to come up with a win-win situation. It's not about an adversarial litigation where we're going to punish somebody. It is an answer we need to find collectively. So the commission model worked very well. They came to the court with solutions and the second tool that we used was a continuing mandamus. We can't, we, instead of deciding the case, we kept on going, you see, passing interim orders and moving the agenda forward, seeing till we found some sort of solutions. And we think that the government policy, which was lying at the shelf for the last several years, through the commission, we activated the policy and the government actually thanked the court that they got to understand what climate change and climate change issues were. So it acted, the court also acted as, 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 a, as a place which was creating awareness. The social, the, the civil society understood what was really happening. So we came, became kind of a centerpiece, which were disseminating information, people were understanding what was happening, the government was understanding what to do, and the, they were learning from all this, um, the experts were sitting on the commission. So Lagari case becomes very important because it brings out all these dimensions that the court brought to climate change and climate justice. Similarly, as we moved on, we came up with another case at the Supreme Court, which was DG cement case, where we stopped the setting up of a cement plant because we thought that the area where they were setting it up was water scarce. And that would lead to water scarcity. Once again, connecting it with climate change, that climate change, Pakistan is a water scarce country. And with climate change uh, and, and, and global warming, we're going to be losing out on water. So we could not possibly allow uh, any such industry to be developed in an area which will totally devastate the area 
by taking out whatever water it has and reducing the level of the aquifer. So that once again became a case which was very important in, in, in this context. So when we look at the judiciary in Pakistan, we think we've moved the agenda forward. We think we've made a difference, you see, and there are new judges coming up who are following this and judiciary is making a tremendous impact in Pakistan as far as climate change is concerned. And let me just uh, quote Greta Thunberg here, who in a recent speech said that nobody's doing anything about things and it's all blah, blah, blah. Let me just say to the young ones in the world that judiciary in Pakistan is making a difference, actually. We make a difference every day. So it's not blah, blah, blah. Thank you very much. <laughs>